Hello there, I'm Paul Franklin. I am the creative director of DNEG, and I'm here today with Max Dennison, uh, who was visual effects supervisor on the Chernobyl TV series. When I saw the first episode, you know, it immediately pulled me in uh, in an immersive way that felt like almost like time travel, like I was being taken back to uh, to the 1980s. You know, I was I remember the disaster well on the news reports at the time and followed it very avidly, mm. and it gave an incredible sort of uh, front row uh, experience of, uh, of the events at the time. I mean, was it clear to you from the outset that visual effects was going to be a big part of the storytelling? Uh, yes, I think it always was. I think it always was going to be important because we would be going back to a place that doesn't exist anymore mm -hmm. uh, and a very big place. Chernobyl site covers about 12 and a half odd square kilometres of which only a portion of that remains in its original state. So I think there was always going to be visual effects in the in the show, but the story is about people. It's about the intimate little stories of people's lives, how they're affected by it. And so our job really was to um, create an environment for those people. They uh, decided to shoot in Lithuania, in Vilnius, Yes, and we had which of course was part of the Soviet Union, which is time. part of the Soviet Union yeah. at the time. Ignalina nuclear power station, is, which is on the northeastern border, um, is a twin of Chernobyl. It's an RBMK reactor, also. What did you have to do to take this place and turn it back into Pripyat, 1986? Thankfully, there wasn't really much that we needed to do. I mean, nowadays there's satellite dishes and there's a lot of UPVC windows and modern cars and modern. Yeah bits and bobs, but uh, that was really it. I think you used to mention that you had to reduce the scale of the place because yes. uh, it's, it was much bigger than Pripyat. Well, it was. I mean, Pripyat was quite a small town, um, about three and a half kilometres from Chernobyl. All the workers lived there and 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 um, worked in the, in the in the plant. Fabianiscus is part of Vilnius and you've got the whole conurbation of uh, Vilnius all around it. So one of the things that we had to do for a certain number of shots was really to bring the the outlying forest, because Pripyat was in a forest, yes. bring that forest back in. So we had to cut away an awful lot of the background chatter. And so we made we made it feel much smaller. So you'll, what you'll see is beyond a certain point, it will go off into forest. I mean, one of the things also that strikes me is that uh, watching the show is the restraint that's shown by the f by the filmmakers that in general I think characterizes a type of filmmaking which I think we've seen before in feature films you know you think about the work that we did on Dunkirk and on uh, First Man recently where there's a sort of documentary level of realism to it uh, and it's unadorned it's mm. not it's not the kind of large-scale visual effects work we associate with big action movies or science fiction films. Yes, yes. But I think this is the first time I've seen that documentary level of realism brought to a drama in this way. And it was, was that something that you... Did you feel that it was going to be like that from the outset? I think we felt that it, it had to reach that level. Mm. I think that was the goal. Um, I think if we, if we hadn't, it wouldn't have been as successful for us. No. I think there was always a, an understanding that we had to reach that goal. And again, it's important to remember that, you know, Craig had done a huge amount of research. This is Craig Mazin, Craig the, writer, Mazin, the writer, writer and producer. And um, I'd had various conversations with him, uh, long conversations, uh, about the science, about the, for example, the blue glow. And we got to a point where we thought, well, if you don't get that level of realism, if we don't get that level that you're talking about, mm. then we really haven't done our job properly. No. There ha the ha behind that, there has to be a desire to really say, well, look, I'm going to make these, these effects invisible. They have to be invisible. And I think if we obey all those rules, yes. then you could hit those marks. Filmmaking now for TV is honest. Mm. I think there's a lot of very interesting stories coming out. Um, and I think there has to be an honesty with, with the visual effects as well. Visual effects is, 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 is another character in the show.